David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Uh, today I have for you a pen from a brand that is relatively new to me. Uh, they came back onto the scene last year. Uh, I was aware of them, but this is the first pen from this brand that I've had the opportunity to check out at length. And that brand is Nettuno. Uh, and the pen that I'm going to be showing you today is the 1911 Black Sands. Uh, what I'm going to do is go over the parts and features of the 1911 Black Sands. I'll talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about the pen. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Uh, thanks go out to the good folks at Goulet Pens for providing this pen for review. Uh, Nettuno is a company founded in Bologna, Italy back in 1911. Uh, they proposed to have been the very first fountain pen company in Italy. Uh, it was founded by a gentleman by the name of Umberto Vacchetti. Uh, Umberto has a friend you might be familiar with, Armando Simoni, who went on to be the founder of another fountain pen company, Omas. Uh, Nettuno originally went out of business in the latter 1950s, uh, but in 2018 it was revived and is now managed by the former co-founder and president of the Delta Pen Company, Nina Marina. The 1911 Black Sands arrives in this box right here. The cover slides off, and then on this highly reflective plexiglass lid, we have a picture of Neptune, who is the inspiration behind the company name, and as you will see, several design elements of this pen. The lid slides open, and nestled in this little bow tie cutout is the pen. Uh, this box, uh, especially this cutout, is very reminiscent of many Delta's uh, boxes. Uh, given Natuno's association with that brand, then this is understandable. Uh, and here we have the pen, the Nettuno 1911 Black Sands. Uh, there's a number of different color options in their 1911 series, uh, which should not be confused with Sailor's 1911 series. Uh, this pen is made from a resin and has a very nice matte finish. I really like the feel of this material a great deal. Um, all of the trim on this model is ruthenium plated, uh, which helps give this pen a bit of an aged look to it. Uh, let's start by taking a look at the end of the cap. Uh, inlaid into the top of the cap is a ruthenium plated disc with a raised wave-like pattern. Uh, this is meant to represent the ocean. Uh, in Roman mythology, Neptune is the god of the sea, uh, basically the counterpart of the Greek god Poseidon. Uh, near the top of the cap here, we have two bands, and then nestled between the bands is the clip. Uh, at the top of the clip, there is a raised trident, the Neptune's weapon of choice. Uh, the clip is a bit on the short side. I, I might have liked to see this clip extended just a little bit, maybe about a quarter inch or so. The end of the clip has a ball, which functions well in being able to operate this clip with thinner fabrics or thicker fabrics like the pockets of uh, jeans. Uh, the cap is straight, and at the end of the cap there is another ruthenium band, uh, devoid of any branding or markings. And then we have a rounded step down to the barrel. Uh, the barrel is straight as well. Uh, on it we have two bands with a repeating raised archway pattern. Uh, the arches in the rings are designed to mimic the arches and porticos which are found in abundance in Bologna. Uh, a portico on a building serves kind of a purpose of making the sidewalk besides the building uh, accessible but extending the upper floors of a building all the way flush with the street. Uh, between the bands on the barrel, uh, it is engraved with the company name, Nettuno, uh, and then spelt out 1911, and made in Italy. Uh, I like the looks of this engraving. I kind of like the looks of that it's a little bit different. It actually has three different fonts, which I find interesting. The last portion of the barrel angles down slightly, and at the end, the, the end is flat and has the number of this pen. Uh, now, these pens are not numbered editions. Uh, think of it more like a serial number. Uh, I wish the number on my specific pen was a little bit more centered, however. Uh, also, for my specific pen, I am not certain whether or not this is pen number 909 or if it is 6060. Uh, my guess is 909, but still, I thought that that was an inter interesting conundrum. The cap twists off to reveal this Bach number no. 6 uh, ruthenium coated steel nib, which is available in extra fine, fine, and medium. Uh, I like the use of laser engraving on this nib. Uh, the Nettuno N is displayed on the nib in negative space, which I think looks really nice. 
And here's a look at the plastic feed. Uh, the section is just slightly concave and a bit on the short side. Uh, it transitions into the threads, which I don't find to be sharp or uncomfortable, and then a small step up to the barrel. Um, while the section is a bit short, I do find it comfortable. Um, I really like the weight of this pen. The metal bands help give it a little extra weight that I feel adds to the feeling of quality that you get when you're using this pen. Uh, it doesn't feel cheap. Um, while the cap does post, and it posts securely, I do feel it makes the pen a bit unwieldy. It back weights it a little bit too much for my taste and throws off the balance a bit. Uh, that's fine because for me, the 1911 is plenty long enough to use unposted. Um, there is one thing, however, if I tap or bump the barrel a bit, you can hear a little bit of a rattle, just like that. Uh, it makes me kind of feel like something's loose on the inside of this pen and just annoys me a little bit. Now, if you move the pen around a bit, it doesn't make that noise, which is a good thing. I have other pens where that's not the case, but I wish that it didn't make that noise when you strike the barrel. Um, I've discovered the source of this rattle and it is the converter and it makes uh, this noise due to a design element of this pen. You see, this piece here at the end of the barrel is also a blind cap. Um, I'm uncertain if this is a historical design element of the Natuno brand, uh, but it was something which Delta used on a regular basis in their pens. Uh, and it's something that I personally don't particularly see a use for. Um, I personally prefer to remove the entire barrel when filling so I can make sure that I get a decent fill. Um, if you only fill by accessing the converter through the blind cap, um, you don't see the quality or the quantity of your fill. Since there is the need for threads in this blind cap, the area which the converter can occupy in the barrel is constricted, and when you tap the barrel, this long metal extension of the converter, which is necessary for it to reach through the end of the barrel, hits against this metal piece. Um, it's not the worst sin ever, but something I felt could have been avoided. Now, something else in regard to the converter, which I feel was a wise design choice, is that it is threaded. So if you happen to be filling the pen via the blind cap, there isn't a risk of you accidentally pulling the converter out of the section, potentially making a mess inside the barrel. Um, besides this included converter, uh, the 1911 accepts standard international cartridges, both long and short. The standard retail price for the Netuno 1911 Black Sands can vary. Uh, you typically see it in the mid to high 300s, uh, but Goulet Pence has recently actually reduced the price not only on this Black Sands model, but all of their Netuno line they carry to $195, which I have to say is an excellent price. Uh, at that price point, I feel this pen is an excellent value. Uh, as I mentioned before, I really like the weight and feel of this pen. It feels very solid. Uh, I love this matte black resin and feel that the ruthenium plated trim really matches well with the overall design and look of this pen. There's a couple of minor things that I would change, but overall I am very much enjoying this pen. Uh, being the first Natuno I've had a chance to spend significant time with, I'm impressed. So now it is time to take a look at some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Netuno 1911 Black Sands. Uh, since this company has some ties to Delta, uh, this is what it looks like in regard to a couple of Delta models. This is the Dolce Vita Oro. Uh, then this is what it looks like with a Dolce Vita Oversized. Uh, and then since it shares the same name, this is what it looks like with a Sailor 1911. The large model actually. And in regard to some Lamis, here it is with an All-Star, a Studio, uh, and then a Stainless Steel 2000. So here we have the Natuno 1911 Black Sands. And this is a medium steel nib. And the ink that I'm using here today is Diamine Pumpkin. This is what the ink looks like. 
Uh, it's kind of a, a nice orangish red. Uh, it's turned into one of my favorite oranges. Uh, here it is in comparison to the Robert Oster Pen Addict Fire on Fire. Uh, and then also something like more of a vibrant orange, which is the Ackerman Orange J. Boven. But I'm really liking this dye mine pumpkin. Uh, when I had first received it, received it here in this 30 milliliter bottle, uh, I do like how dye mine labels the top of their 30 milliliter bottles. I think that's very helpful. Uh, but after I played around with this, I realized that I'm really liking this ink. So I needed to actually go pick it up in their larger 80 milliliter bottles, which are nice as well. So here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, as you might have noticed during the writing sample, this is a rather noisy nib, uh, that, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It has a bit of feedback to it, but I'd call it good feedback. Uh, and I like the, the, the feel of this pen when it writes, uh, and the noise doesn't bother me, but it's, not a, uh, it's something that is a little bit different. It's not a buttery smooth uh, writing experience, but the feedback on it is nice. You can get a little bit of line variation here, out of this pen. Uh, this Bach nib I found is to be nice. It's actually better than uh, a lot of the Bach nibs that I've tested in the past, but uh, this one is very nice. In regard to ink flow, it does a good job there. In regard to reverse writing, It's a little sharp, but it does lay down an extra, extra fine line. In regard to some fast drying, There was some skipping issues here at the end, but I think that's more in the angle I was holding the, uh, uh, the nib. I haven't had any issues at all with the feed on this pen. So I think that was more me than the pen. But overall, I am really enjoying this Natuno 1911 Black Sands. Uh, some of the other colors in their line don't necessarily speak to me as much, but I'm really liking this matte black and ruthenium look. And then on top of that, it performs fantastic. So especially for this price point, uh, where it's being offered at Goulet right now, it's something that I would highly recommend uh, to check out. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.